closed reduction technique of supracondylar humerus fractures. Simplified and cartoonized. The closed reduction technique described in this section can be used for the majority of extension type, type 3 and 4, supracondylar fractures. The technique follows the rules published in Charnley's textbook, The Closed Treatment of Common Fractures, in turn, based on the original Blunt method, published in 1954 in his Fractures in Children. If this technique is applied correctly, the majority, more than 95%, of supracondylar humeral fractures can be reduced. This technique is not suitable for error, less than 5%, flexion type supracondylar fractures. An alternative technique for the reduction of flexion type fractures will be presented below. It is important that the patient be well fixed and prepared, and that the image intensifier and equipment are ready prior to attempt reduction. Soft tissue reduction. To apply traction, the arm is extended to approximately 10 degrees short of full extension. With an assistant supporting the proximal humerus, progressive traction is applied at the wrist. Longitudinal traction on the forearm and wrist should be maintained for at least 5 to 10 minutes. The goal of this maneuver is to align the fragments by disengaging the humeral shaft from the anterior muscles and skin. If reduction cannot be achieved and there is no clear bone contact, the pierced brachialis muscle might be entrapped. A milking maneuver over the muscles, biceps and brachialis muscle, starting in the middle of the humerus and continuing distally, can be done in an attempt to release the muscle. This maneuver must be done repeatedly in order to reduce the soft tissue around the shaft. Once the fracture is aligned, and all soft tissue entrapment is released, the first C-arm check is performed with the arm extended. The fracture must be out to length and rotationally aligned as indicated by the visible olecranon on fossa and the aligned lateral and medial columns. Correction of medial slash lateral translation and varus slash valgus deformity. Correction of medial slash lateral translation and varus slash valgus deformity should be done if visible on X-ray. Angulation and translation are corrected by direct manipulation, using a thumb and index finger on the epicandyles. The correction is verified using an image intensifier. Correction of any internal or external malrotation noted on a true lateral X-ray should also be performed at this point. Notice my thumb in the photograph. While maintain the correction of rotational, varus slash valgus, and or translational displacement, the elbow is flexed with the hand in supination. For this maneuver, the thumb is placed on the olecranon and pushes it anteriorly while the rest of the hand fixes the humerus. The fracture is reduced only if the elbow can be flexed more than 120 degrees. If the elbow cannot be flexed more than 120 degrees, it is a sign that the distal fragment still remains posterior, that the complete length has not been regained, or there is muscle entrapment. If a complete reduction cannot be assured, the maneuver has to be repeated. Note, during the flexion maneuver, the forearm should be rotated so that it is fully pronated when the arm reaches full flexion. The pronation helps to tilt the distal fragment out of any varus position and also assists in stabilizing the fracture. Note, during the flexion maneuver, the forearm should be rotated so that it is fully pronated when the arm reaches full flexion. The pronation helps to tilt the distal fragment out of any varus position and also assists in stabilizing the fracture. The sequence of maneuvers and fluoroscopy views. 1. Longitudinal traction. 2. Milking maneuver. 3. Correction of medial slash lateral translation and varus slash valgus deformity. Notice the surgeon's thumb in fluoroscopic view. Preoperative radiographs of the elbow. Notice the lateral displacement. Correction of medial lateral translation and varus slash valgus deformity. Notice the surgeon's thumb.
lateral side pinning. Notice the fluoroscopic views. Medial side pinning. Notice the marking of the medial epicondyle and pathway of the ulnar nerve. Notice the fluoroscopic views. Medial side pinning. Notice the marking of the medial epicondyle and pathway of the ulnar nerve. Notice the fluoroscopic views. Intraoperative lateral fluoroscopic view. Notice the perfect reduction on anteroposterior and lateral view. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non profit YouTube channel.